Hey guys, I wanted to bring you kind of a little mini review of the Nexus 7 tablets. Now this is not a nitty gritty specifications kind of review, this is a real life, this is the difference between the new and the old, so I want somebody that's maybe looking to upgrade, or if you're deciding whether or not you want to pick up one of the old ones which are currently on sale for crazy prices while they blow out stock, or if you want to get the current version. So I've been using the original since basically it came out. Absolutely loved it. I use it every single day. Um, I do use it a little bit for business. It comes in very handy for taking notes. I use it with uh, Evernote and I use it to show photo galleries and I use it to show my calendar. It comes in very handy but I do have the Wi-Fi only models so I still have my iPhone wherever I go also. I can tether it if I need to but Generally, I use this for when I just need a little bit bigger presentation specifically with clients. Other than that, it is a personal use device. I use it pretty much every night in bed for watching movies, watching TV, surfing, email, you know, just normal content consumption. I do not do too much content creation on this or any mobile device. I don't like doing that. It's not very efficient. But... I stream Netflix, I watch movies that I've downloaded or converted from Blu-ray, I have probably a dozen shortcuts that I view every single day, I use it for my Pulse News Reader, you know, just a whole lot of general internet type usage. Now I want to go over some physical differences first, and again, I'm not going to go through the actual specifications, you can look all that up. Bottom line is, there is not a huge difference. I was really expecting more of a difference. Now, of course, they only upped the price just a little bit, and I think it's still an excellent bargain. We also have an iPad Mini that the wife uses, and, you know, none of them are perfect, in my opinion. If they had a Retina iPad Mini out, I honestly probably would have gotten that, but they don't. And if it did come out, it would be probably twice the price of this. So, I mean, it wouldn't be as nearly a good deal. But anyway, I always use this with a case. So the actual feel of the raw unit isn't that important to me. Here's the type of case I use on it. And I absolutely love this case because it's great for watching movies. The unit just slips in the top here and it just presses down into the corners. So it stays, but you can pop it out easily. It doesn't have to be slid out. And then it just rests in one of two of these grooves. And I just put this on my chest while I'm watching TV in bed, or you can put it on a desk and you can angle it. Now it doesn't do portrait, so that is the limitation of this particular case, but there are some that have a rotating thing. I never watch it in portrait mode, so I don't care about that. And then of course, if you snap it down into here, you can hold it like this and work on it. And this is how I use it in meetings and stuff like that. So I really do love this case. It's very comfortable. It's fake leather. It's held up extremely well. It was like 15 bucks off of Amazon. I have this coming now for the new one. They are slightly different dimensions, so it is not interchangeable. Um, but I do have one on the way for this. But in the meantime, I have to use it bare. But like I said, I'm going to tell you some things I don't like about the way they feel, but because I use the case, I really don't care because once the case is on, I never have to see it again. The back on the original is kind of like a, a rubberized vinyl. It has a slightly sticky feel. It's not slick like a slippery leather or a slippery vinyl, but it's got a real nice softness to it. It feels like isotoner leather gloves. It has that kind of texture. So it does feel nice in the hand, very soft, doesn't feel like it's slipping. The edges are very well beveled, very smooth, there's nothing sharp. The buttons are easy to use, they have just a little bit of protrudence, so they're easy to hit, even directly from the side. I can hit the power button, just hitting the side, volume rockers, nice tactile feel, no problems with them whatsoever. If you've got your camera in the middle, nothing on the top headphone and USB port both on the bottom. That's all you've got. Just the three buttons and the two ports. Thickness wise they did thin it out quite a bit. 
you do notice that if you're no if you're picking them up side by side these are the kinds of things you notice I don't know how we, how well you'll see that but it's it's a good third thinner on the new version however if I were just to be using these holding it in my hand normally if I wasn't holding them side by side you would never know it weight wise just about the same can't tell the difference I can tell the difference between this and the iPad mini but these now nah, they're close enough for no real world difference there whatsoever now in this one you still have a very nice bevel but because it's a little thinner this edge here is a little bit sharp you do feel it in your hand but again I'm gonna have the case on it so I'm never gonna feel this again I don't care but the old one was a little bit better there button wise this is not an improvement button wise the volume rockers no longer have any kind of separator in between them it's just actually one big rocking button and they don't protrude as much they're almost flush with the case so you can't hit them directly from the side anymore you have to roll your finger underneath and almost push up at an angle to hit the buttons so that's not as convenient especially when it's in the case because when it's in the case you have the actual side of the case and you gotta kind of squeeze your finger around to the side so the old one was a lot more convenient for using the buttons because I can just do this again not a huge deal but definitely not an improvement <clears throat> excuse me not an improvement all right let's get into the units here now both of these are configured virtually identically um, the old one I had wiped last night and I decided today can you even see that let me see where I have these framed I'm sorry yeah you can okay <laughs> I wasn't sure there for a second um, the old one I had wiped just did a factory restore and then I just now did a re-sign in and if you've never used uh, I'm not sure if all Android devices are like this but the Nexuses they work just like restoring uh, from Apple's iCloud you just choose your language you sign in with your Google account that you have linked and it simply downloads everything you have synced and all your settings are the same and I didn't have to pick my wallpapers I didn't have to I just finished installing a game here um, I didn't have to you know do anything it just sets it up the way I had it so it was really cool and the new one I did that too also while I was still working off the old one and it just went through a couple updates they're both running now at the current as of the filming of this video Jelly Bean 4.3 and that's it I've got the same apps on it I've got nothing running on both at least I should have oh, I've got a play store on there okay bye bye so now there's nothing running on both um, software wise they are identical all right the apps don't know you're on one versus the other there is no difference between using either one screen ratios are exactly the same the resolution is different the old one is 720p the new one is 1080p can't really say I notice it at all in normal use I notice it a little bit in movies and of course you can play a 1080p versus a 720p video at the size it's again really debatable whether or not it's a clear difference the actual screen it's I mean again I'm not gonna go through all the specs it's a little bit better it's not day and night again it's just little incremental differences it's a little bit more saturated it can go a little brighter but I have my brightness turned down it's way too bright if on full on either one of them the contrast is a little bit better and it it just looks a little more realistic the old one I'll say that the new one looks normal it looks good there's no problems with it whatsoever there's nothing that catches your eye that says that's not right the old one had a tendency to look a little washed out uh, especially in the highlights during movies it seems like the gamma was pushed up a bit meaning the midpoints the skin tones would occasionally be bright for example if I watched my cigar videos if I watched myself on the old one my skin would often be blown out a little bit like it was overexposed and it wasn't the video it looks fine on my computer it was just the old Nexus um, uh, again I'm not gonna go to the nitty-gritty but it's because of the Tegra 3 processor that's in it 
it has a few features that causes that. And the old, the new one does not do that. The new one just looks correct. So that is a very nice difference. The one big thing that is immediately noticeable is the speaker configuration. They finally, finally fixed the speaker configuration. Now, I am not 100% sure, because again, I'm not a overly techie spec guy, but when I'm playing a movie, this sucker is playing in stereo. you got, I'm assuming, one big speaker down here. There's a split grill over the charge port or the USB port, but I'm assuming it's a single speaker with just two outlets here and another one at the top. So when I'm playing a movie, I've got the sound coming out of both sides. It's much, much louder and clearer. Incredibly clearer and louder. The old one sucked. Really sucked. This had one speaker, and it was on the very bottom. It wasn't pointing out the sides. It was on the bottom. So when it's in a case, it's blasting back into the case or into the room. It's not coming at you at all. It completely diminishes the volume, and it didn't go that loud to begin with. That was my major complaint with the volume of the old one, even through the headphones. When I would watch movies on a plane, I would have the, the volume completely maxed out, and I would have to hold the headphones against my ears in order to clearly hear things. The new one does not have that problem. Much, much better volume out of the new one. The iPad Mini is still louder, both through the speaker and the headphones. But the new one is completely acceptable now. The old one, that was a big problem. That was one big, huge problem I had with the old one. But didn't fly with it that often, wasn't a deal breaker. I normally use headphones with it in bed and don't quite max out the volume on most selections, so it was fine. Speed-wise, not a huge difference. Again, some things are actually faster on the old one. Uh, launching a couple websites for some reason seemed to be a little faster. Uh, what I've got here is I cleared the cache on Chrome and I cleared the cache on Google Earth. I fired them up once just to make sure that they were working and I got rid of all the prompts for the product tour and all that. But I haven't done anything with them and I did clear cache. So I've got a few websites that I will do a side-by-side -side test here. Um, obviously both of these are connected to the same Wi-Fi and I've got decent signal so there's no limitations here. Both of these are set to the identical settings as far as the software, the setup, and all of that. So, um, well, first I'll run through these three apps here. These are uh, three things that I routinely use. I've got two games that I really love to play on this. One is Texas Poker. And if you're a Hold'em fan, this is now a really good app. They used to have really poor algorithms where basically every hand was like a full house, four of a kind, three of a kind. Everything, every hand was something huge. So it was ridiculous. It wasn't real. It wasn't random. But it seems like a few weeks ago they changed their algorithm and it's actually damn realistic now. So it's a lot more fun. Anyway, let's launch those up. And that's going to be in a landscape mode. So let me flip them here. I'll show you the difference here between response. Let me grip these so I can flip them quick for you. See how quickly they respond to turning. There we go. Kind of hard with one hand here. Don't want to hit the buttons. Okay. So I'm going to flip these at the same time and we'll just see how they do. I haven't done this yet. Okay, well a definite and decisive speed difference there. New one is faster, most of the time at least. I'd say the new one is on par now with the iPad Mini. The old one did lag behind about that much. So again, not a day and night difference, but it's there. Okay, let's go back to landscape here and launch poker. Just want to see how fast they come up. It's a fairly large app. And uh, again, there's nothing running on either one. They're both fully updated. Let's see how they do. Okay. 
Okay, well, the new one was about twice as fast. Cool, I just won some free cash. Okay, so that was a pretty good difference. Let's see if we go into a game. Now, this isn't going to be a apples to apples comparison because it does have to go to the network and join games. Let's see, I'm signed in as guest here and excuse me, and me over here because I haven't launched down here before. So about the same going into a game. Uh, I forgot I have to actually quit this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here, actually, I want to go back into that. Here is a clear example of the resolution differences. Let me turn this down. Here you can see that on the old one, 720p, the table fills the screen. This app has not been updated. And like I said, software-wise, the apps don't know yet if you're on the new one or the old one. So there is, I have noticed some things where some apps do not display well on the new one. I imagine there, there will be updates coming, but you can see that pretty much half your screen here is useless because it's all space around the table. So you've got smaller things to click on. You can't zoom in. So, you know, that's one not cool thing. But that's an app problem, not a tablet problem. If that were bigger, you'd simply have more detail. So let me leave these tables and quit. All right, let's try CBS. Now, I've not launched this at all on either one of these, so I don't know if there's going to be some prompts to, you know, go through a tour or something. But this will be launching and downloading any data, but I want to see what kind of differences we have here. I do notice that the initial launch of any app is a little faster on the on the new version. But you can see once they get going, once you get past that initial load, just about the same. Really no difference there. Both are nice and fluid scrolling. The new one seems to pop in data faster. Could just be the connection though. Can't really say anything conclusive about that. But actually using the app, both are smooth. No real difference there. Just a little tiny bit faster launch. Let's try the pinball. Uh, I don't think I've launched this on either, so I don't know if I have to sign in. We'll see. Yeah, I gotta accept that. Just install that. Oh, uh, I don't remember my login. Crud. All right, I'm gonna skip that one. I don't feel like going through that right now. But you can see not a huge difference launching that one either. Okay, let's try. Let's try Chrome. Okay, here is another clear example of, and this is surprising because this is a Google application, how the resolution is not correct. For some reason, on the new one, the bookmark graphics are all spread out. I could fit all my bookmarks on one convenient page on the original, and this makes me scroll. I've got another bookmark folder with my full set, but I've got these four set apart for testing here. You can see they just spread out, and I can't find anything in the settings about how to change that. It's just kind of annoying. I'm, I'm hoping they update that soon. I mean, I thought that would be like, you know, launching with the new one. I can't possibly be the first person to notice or be annoyed by that. You can also, I don't well, I'm not sure if you can see, but I can see that they have fixed for the better the color temperature of the displays. And this is back to the hardware thing. 
it's a little bit warmer. It's a little bit more truer, accurate color on the new one. It's slight. If I wasn't looking at this again side by side, I probably would not notice it. But the old one is slightly cooler. It's a slightly bluer white. And that's, again, just the hardware difference. The iPad Mini also was the truer. So now the new one, I would say, is on par with the iPad Mini's screen display. Not a huge big deal. Again, you have to see them side by side to even notice it. But here on this Chrome screen, because it's white, it's really obvious with these side to side. But seriously, if you stare at it for five seconds without looking at the other one, your eyes adjust and your brain does not see anything. That's just the way the human eyes work. So just something to notice. Uh, let's go ahead and launch Video Sift. Again, I have cleared the cache on both of these, so they are completely blank. I've not been to any websites on the cache on either one of these, so we'll see how they load. I will say that with the old one, I really didn't see any problems except with large sites like Video Sift, or if I had a lot of apps running. The old one seemed to get a little glitchy or slow down or start to stutter video a bit after a long time of use or with a lot of apps running and I haven't noticed that at all with the new one. So I think the new one either is managing its memory better or just because it has some more or faster processor or a combination thereof that's doing a lot better. I don't notice anything like that on the new one. Again, on par with the iPad mini. I don't notice any glitches or anything funny with the iPad mini. The old one, I would see it sometimes, especially in video sifts. So I want to see the difference here. Um, it took a long time to load usually, and it took, it was a little jerky scrolling sometimes, and sometimes playing the videos, which I won't show here because of copyright, but sometimes playing the videos would just be a little clunky. Let's see how it does. I gotta watch the loading counter because there are a number of things that load in. I wanna see when it starts to suck. Okay, that one's done. This one's still going. Still going. Now it's about twice as long. Still going. See, it went again. Now it's done. So over twice as long. You can see how that could be a little annoying because I, I like video sift. You know, I watch it a lot. Some cool stuff to enjoy and discover videos that way. So. Scrolling, absolutely normal on the new one. Now again, this is the only thing running on here, and this is the way it usually was even on the old one with nothing running. But absolutely fluid, no delay, no jerkiness. Old one, just as good. No problem there. But again, huge, huge difference loading it. And if I were to click on one of these, you would see the same kind of delay. So just the general navigation of the site or anything large, or when I had a lot of stuff going, it could get a little frustrating just because of the delay. It's like, come on, come on, you done? You could see the new one lickety split there. Okay, let's go back and we'll try CNET. Not a particularly challenging site to load. Usually loaded pretty fast. Just want to see what the difference is. It's just one I go to regularly. You can see the new one initially loads very quickly and it's still going and it's done. Old one did take significantly longer to start coming up and now it's done. So again, a lot of stuff on the page, a lot of elements, a lot of graphics, a lot of stuff to load, and the new one was about twice as fast. Scrolling again, absolutely fine, no problems there. Let me get rid of that pop-up. Let's go into this first article. See how that loads. Now that some is in cache, at least, from the site. Both still loading. Loading some ads. Loading the text. Still going. 
new one's done and old one's done. So you can see that, oh, no, new one's gone. Okay, they're both, they're just refreshing some ads. Virtually identical. Once you get the base of the site into cache and it just had to load whatever new content was on that page. Both had a pretty, pretty significant delay there. But I would imagine that's just the website. So let's go back and go to the bookmarks again. And let's try my cigar site. Again, have not loaded this at all. Again, not a challenging site for any browser, but a good number of elements. A lot of graphics to load. You've got four pictures per review post. New one's done, old one's done. So not a huge difference there. This is a, a real basic site for a browser to load. Pretty much just graphics, text. Oop, clicked on something there. Graphics, text, and some uh, banners. That's really it. Scrolling is just the same on any of them. Let's click on this bottom one here. Uh, since this is my channel, I can play my videos. And YouTube won't kill me for copyright infringement again. Not that I ever did that intentionally. I've had some bogus people try to flag my videos. So far, I've always won the disputes, but it's a complete pain in the butt. I don't know why they bother, because it's illegal when they do it. Okay, so here we've got uh, a YouTube video, and I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I don't know if this is going to try to open in Chrome. It might say, do you want to open it in YouTube? So we'll see, because I have set up my YouTube account on the new one. I have not on the old one after the refresh. That is one thing that's really annoying. I have to say how Google has combined all the freaking accounts, Google+, YouTube, AdSense, the account controlling whatever Android device you have, Gmail. It is so annoying that they have that stuff linked and it all links. I mean, I have to go into the settings of the Nexus 7 to add an account for whatever account my YouTube name is just so I can go to youtube.com and use the account there. You can't do it from inside the app. It's a mess. All right. It's a real mess. This is one of the differences between Apple and everybody else. You can give an Apple to Grandma and she can figure it out. You have to be tech savvy to use a freaking Android device. That means you have to be young. You have to have grown up with the stuff so it's second nature. But believe me, if you are an older adult and you did not grow up on this stuff, uh, people of my generation made fun of our parents because they couldn't program the VCR. Younger people these days make fun of people because they can't use current technology. I can, obviously, but believe me, my parents can't. Uh, I bought my parents this tablet, and I don't think they even use it anymore. But anyway, let me see what happens when I click on these YouTube videos. Okay, so they launched virtually identically. Uh, the old one technically came up first. So that's fine. Now, I don't know how, because I'm filming this on my iPhone. Let me try to make these full screen. Let's see if I can show you. Now watch my skin tone. When my face comes back, notice how you see, well, hopefully, notice how you see more details in the new one than the old one. Again, I don't know how this phone is going to affect that, but look at my forehead. Look at the highlights in my cheeks. You can see even in my shirt, some of the wrinkles are gone on my shoulder there where I can see them very clearly. Three big wrinkles here in my shirt and they're gone here because it's all blown out. That's what the old, okay, especially in this scene right here. I mean, my face is looking completely washed out compared to over here. Not just the color, the details are gone because it's just blown out. The gamma is really cranked up in the old processor. And I hated that. Absolutely hated that. New one is now awesome. That combined with the increased speaker and volume, those are the two big game changers that made me absolutely decide to keep this. Honestly, when I got this and it was such an incremental difference, I was debating on taking it back. But 
these two things were just like, okay, that is worth it right there because those were my two huge annoyances with the old one, and they are now fixed. So very happy about that. Anyone upgrading will immediately notice that kind of difference. Let's see one more test here with slickdeals.net, another site I visit multiple times a day, always looking for good deals or just browsing around, especially photography stuff. I've got a private photography group for people around here, and anytime there's a good Canon sale or coupon code or something like that, I let them know. So I've got a lot of uh, keyword hot things set up with that, so I get notified. Anyway, it can be a fairly intensive site, but it's mostly just text and graphics, so shouldn't be too intensive. Just want to see what kind of difference there is. New one definitely starts to come up quicker. Still loading a couple things. Still loading. Still loading an ad. Again, not an apples to apples comparison because they may not be loading the same ads and such. But overall, you could see that, okay, now that's done. Overall, the new one started to come up quicker. Again, not a day and night difference. You're only talking a second or two. Old one is still going. Might be stuck on an ad. I'm not going to call that a device difference. That's just the site itself for this particular load. But again, you can see it's not that big of a deal. This is another site where I can see the difference in the display. The old one being much cooler and blue in the whites and this being much more accurate. Because it is a, a very white website to begin with. Pull up an item here. Now that we have the site in cache. And new one again, just started to come up a little quicker. And it's loading a bunch of ads and stuff. So nothing real big there either. So is it worth it to you to upgrade? I guess that depends on exactly what you use it for. Maybe how much you can get for your old one. I'm counting on losing quite a bit. I'm just, I've got this one for sale right now for 140 with the case. So somebody will get a really good deal. And the old one is a 32 gig, by the way. So that is a big markdown, but I don't have use for it. So might as well give somebody a good deal on it. Uh, is it worth it to upgrade? That is very personal. You're going to have to ask yourself, seeing that, um, you know, are the hardware differences that big a deal to you? Do you use it a lot on a plane? Do you use the built-in speakers a lot? Yes, then the new one is going to be very good for you. Uh, does the inaccurate color of the old one drive you crazy like it does me? Uh, yes, then, well, the new one is going to solve that for you. If you have this and you never notice that until I just pointed it out to you, then forget I said anything and save your money. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, is it worth picking an old one up? Because you can get these for like 70 bucks below what they were last year right now while they still have stock. Or you can get a refurbished one, even cheaper. You know, that's an option too. Maybe you don't need bleeding edge. Maybe you just want something cheap for the kids. This is still an excellent deal. Oh, one other thing I will say that is a big difference is battery life. More than a couple hours difference going to the new one. I don't think they really improved the battery so much as the efficiency. I think the new processor is just a heck of a lot more efficient. But uh, I would typically get six or seven hours of watching movies on the old one. And this is more like nine to ten so far. It's really a noticeable difference. I mean, it's not like twice as much or anything, but it is definitely noticeable. Um, you do notice that you have to charge it a little bit more. So I, I do think they added a little bit of capacity, but it's not obviously a big chunkier battery. They made it smaller. So I think it just comes down to the guts they used. So there you go. There is my real world ramble about the 2012 versus 2013 Nexus 7. 
and I hope this helps somebody out whether you're choosing to upgrade or choosing which one to buy. Thanks guys. See you next time.